Let's learn some Python by example. If you like the content, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We're going to work on an exercise from exorcism.org called Meltdown Mitigation. It's designed to teach us about if statements, elif statements, and else statements, essentially the primary control flow mechanisms that are used in Python. Let's take a look at the code and at the instructions to the problem so that we can see what we need to do. I've already got the code downloaded and ready to go, and we have a set of tests that come from Exorcism, so we can check and see already that our implementation is not working right now because we have not made any modifications yet. Let's look at the instructions, see what we have to implement, and then try and run these tests and see if we can get them all to pass. This problem is about trying to set up a simple control system for a hypothetical nuclear reactor. It's really meant to be just a kind of a silly example just to give you something to think about as you're working through it. Each step gives us a set of rules that we need to implement for the functions that we have to do, and we can run those things against the tests that are available to see if we got the correct answer. So our first thing to do is do a check for criticality. There is a function that exists called is criticality balanced, and these are the rules that we have to apply in order to produce a Boolean value. The is criticality function takes a temperature and a neutrons emitted, and we have our rules here that we need to use as our business logic for this function. So let's start with this. It says the first thing a control system had to do is, is check that the reactor is balanced criticality. A reactor is said to be critical if it satisfies the following conditions. The temperature is less than 800 Kelvin. The number of neutrons emitted per second is greater than 500. And the product of temperature and neutrons emitted per second is less than 500,000. So let's work on that and see if we can make our test pass. So the first thing we need to check is, is the temperature less than 800 Kelvin? It tells us that the unit provided for this function is going to be in Kelvin, so we don't have to do any conversion. So we can should be able to do a check that looks like temperature less than 800. We could extract this number into a variable and give it a, a more meaningful name, but I'm going to start with just putting it directly into the code in this way. It helps that the documentation string is right here that explains what that value is. So if we run the tests, we can see that one of them passed, so we probably it was that check for the temperature being right, but we still have a lot to go. Let's look at the next one. The next thing we need to check is that the number of neutrons emitted per second is greater than 500. This number provided is in a per second amount, so that again, there's no conversion that needs to happen. So we can add a, an AND to our condition and check against that. So let's say neutrons emitted is greater than 500. And again, if we run the tests, we don't have more passing, so it means that there's something else going on. It could be that the test data depends on all three of the conditions in order to satisfy the constraints. Finally, we need to check that the product of the temperature and the neutrons emitted per second is less than 500,000. So let's add our third check. So this will be temperature times neutrons emitted is less than 500,000. Now I have a formatter on my code that will automatically restructure things when it gets over a certain line length, which is why it jumped that way. If we try to run the test again, we suddenly see that all of our tests passed. So the three conditions combined together is what was required to make the test satisfactory. So we're ready to move to the next function. Let's check it out. Determine the power output range. Once the reactor has started producing power, its efficiency needs to be determined. Efficiency can be grouped into four bands, green, orange, red, and black, and they tell us some efficiencies that we have. So we have data that's coming in that's not going to be in, uh, calculated in efficiency, so we have some bit of calculation to do first, but they tell us how to generate the efficiency amount. So we can calculate it by generated power, divided by theoretical power times 100. And then we have the calculation for generated power is voltage times current. Well, so let's start with that. 
we have our voltage and current. So we'll say generated power is equal to voltage times current. And then we can calculate our efficiency they said was the generated power divided by the theoretical max power times 100. That's generated power divided by theoretical max power times 100. So there's some parentheses here, but those parentheses shouldn't be needed for Python, the actual Python code, because the precedence of multiply and divide is at the same level, so it should go left to right for us and do the right thing. So if we were to uh, return this, that's not what the problem is ac asking for. It's asking for us to check the value against uh, a set of numbers. So the first thing to do is go down through the list um, in green, orange, red, black order. And they actually order this in a way that's really convenient because what we can do is use an if statement and an elif statement and keep kind of going down. And if it doesn't satisfy the first constraint, it will go to the next block and check that, that range and then the next one and then the next one. So we'll start by saying if efficiency is what? Greater than is 80% or more. So it can be right at 80%. So we need to pay attention to the values there. So greater than or equal to. And I think by multiplying by 100, these have been put into not 0 to 1 range, but a base of 0 to 100 range. So we should be able to do uh, the actual 80 value rather than 0.8. So if it's this, then we know that we are returning a green status. So let's try that. To see if we're on the right track, we're going to run this second set of tests and see if we get one passing test that is checking for green. We do have one passing, so I think we're on the right path. So the next thing to check is we need to check for orange, which is less than 80, but at least 60%. So we already know that the values greater than 80 are out. So we know that anything in here is going to be, as long as it's above 60, it will satisfy the constraints. So we'll say efficiency greater than or equal to 60. And it says, notice it says at least 60, so we want to use greater than or equal to and not just greater than. So here we want to return orange. We run the same tests. We still have one passing, so there must be some other stuff there that needs to be part of that, that test. Let's keep going and fill it out with red and black, and then we'll see if we're on path or if we need to correct something. Maybe we understood the problem incorrectly, or me in, in this case, since you're listening to me. So we're going to say if efficiency is greater than or equal to 30, then we should be in the red area, because this is the 60 to 30 bucket. And finally, we should be, anything else that's below this is black. Um, so that's 30 and, or below 30 to zero. And we could put this, we could do this in two, one of two ways. We could either say else and return black, which would be an acceptable way to go. And the only return path possible here. Uh, so it's never going to um, have Python get out of this else if else block and then return something down here. That's just not going to happen. Um, or we could also delete the else and outdent the return black, so make it happen after the else uh, if else block. Um, both solutions will work. I'll just use this because it's the more common pattern that I like to do, uh, but you can choose the, your preference there. If we run the tests again, we can see that all of our tests have passed, so we're in good shape. We're ready to move on to the last function in this problem. Let's check out the instructions. So now we're trying to devise a failsafe mechanism. It says your final task involves creating a failsafe mechanism to avoid overload and meltdown. The mechanism will determine if the reactor is below, at, or above the ideal criticality threshold. 
Verticality can then be increased, decreased, or stopped by inserting or removing control rods into the reactor. This information is superfluous. So I think they're probably putting it in here to make you think and think if it, you need to uh, use that as part of your solution, but they don't provide any sort of parameters that use that information. So I think it's really there either to flesh out a more interesting ex exercise or to try and make you think about what is important information versus not. So we are going to have a function that is going to have temperature, neutrons produced per second, and a threshold. And we want to do some calculations here that determine whether we need to say low, normal, or danger. Those are the three different types of states that we could produce. So the threshold is provided to us, and we have um, the temperature and neutrons produced per second. And it tells us that we need to calculate this as temperature times neutrons produced per second is less than 90% of the threshold. So how do we calculate that? We can do it this way. We can say if the temperature times the neutrons produced per second divided by the threshold, that's going to give us that ratio. If that value is less than 90, then we should get our proper answer. Now, this might be a value that's put on 0 to 1, though. So we might need to multiply this by 100 or do less than 0 0.9. Um, I'm going to leave it just as 90 right now because I haven't seen the numbers that are coming out of here. We can check on that in a minute. So we can say that in that scenario, it's supposed to return low. So that's the case where it's below 90. The other case here is where the normal range for this, and it is defined as plus or minus 10% of the threshold. In other words, if it is 90 or up to 110, um, if we're talking about in pure percentage points. So I think what we can do, rather than writing this all out again, is take this calculation and extract it out into a variable because we're going to use the same calculation over and over for each of our checks. So let's think of a reasonable name to call this. Um, I guess we can call it the ratio. I don't know if that's the best name, but it's the first name that's popping into my head and the name isn't super important here as long as we have one to work with. So let's take these values and put it into a variable. And now we have a ratio value. So now we've done the calculation just once. So that actually our function would be a little bit more efficient if we were trying compared to doing this multiple times. So now we can do an elif case where we are going to do 90 is less than or equal to ratio which is less than or equal to uh, 110. That would be the no normal operating range of this failsafe. And I think it wanted us to say normal as the response. And if you're not one of those two things, if you're not less than 90 and you're not in that range, then it must mean you're above that. Again, we can do this with an else clause, or we can just say a return outdented to the last state, which is danger in this case. Let's try and run the test and see if we got it right, or I might be off with the calculation because that ratio number might be not in the order of magnitude that I think it is. Okay, it thinks it's low, so I'm, it's pretty, I'm pretty confident that it's in the wrong order of magnitude. So let's take this and multiply by 100 and try running the test again. So that, that, that fixed it. So what was happening is we were having a value that was between 0 and 1, and so by our definition everything looked like a low, even though there were certainly cases that were normal and high. If we run all of the tests, we see that the entire problem is now solved. We're about to look at a couple of community solutions, but before we do that, we can actually 
pay attention to some feedback that was provided by the Exorcism platform, things that I overlooked when I was writing my solution that we can actually adjust to make improvements. There is an analysis tool that is telling us that we're actually using the wrong construct to set our guard clauses in our functions, and we can change them from an elif to an if statement. So let's talk through what this is actually telling us. Let's fix our solution, and then, looks, then let's look at a couple of community solutions. In the way I presented the solution, we have these if statements, and then I said to use an elif here. But that doesn't really help us because each of our lines here is going to return. So in this flow, this if this return happens, then there's never going to be a chance to have an elif. So it's either going to happen or it's going to move on to the next thing. And so the real reason, the real solution for us to apply is take off the elif. And that will simplify this code a little bit. So we should be able to do that from all three of these spots, rerun the tests, and prove that they work. Let's take a look at our first community solution and see if it has anything that we can learn from it. One thing that we haven't talked about at all and I'm not going to comment too much on is that Python has something called optional type annotations, which is what this user has done here with these union int float things and so on. We're going to ignore this stuff. If you know what type annotations are, great. But if you don't, don't worry about it right now. Let's look at the body of the function and see if we can learn anything. The first thing is pretty much identical to the solution that I had, although these parentheses right here are not necessary, so I don't know why the user included them. You can do this just fine without including those. If we move down to the reactor efficiency section, it has pretty much exactly what you would expect. It looks very similar to ours, except that they used the else block when we outdented and put the return black over here in line with the if statements. Now also notice that they did the elif thing like we did, but we don't have to do that. We can just make these if statements. Finally, on the failsafe function, they have a similar solution to what we do, did. The difference being that they did not multiply by 100, so their values are using the 0 to 1 ranges that you would expect if you had fractional amounts. Here is another user's solution. Let's see what we can see from this one. The solution here uses some interesting notation that is, is available in Python, but is not something you might anticipate. It is the standard uh, base 10 multiplication stuff that you might have learned from math class. So 5e5 is equivalent to 50,000. And otherwise, it is a solution that uh, has some variance to it, but uh, does what I would expect. Uh, it looks a little odd in its structure because there's an if statement with a return. I think it was better to group them all together with multiple ands. And so this feels a little confusing to me personally, but it is a workable solution. The efficiency version here, the reactor efficiency, is very much like our own solution. So nothing to comment on there. And finally, the failsafe version does the 0 to 1 calculation rather than the 100 whole number based solution that I produced, but it is otherwise what I would expect. Although there's a little bit of wasted multiplication here where criticality is defined and then it's multiplied again here. That was not necessary. If you enjoyed learning about this exercise, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you.